Hi, everyone. I'm Nicole Moldovan from Limba, the premier NLP company for working with graphs. Today, I'm going to walk you through how you can get unstructured data from various documents into a usable format in a graph. So here we have a patient complaint as well as her medical history. And we see that we have the issue that brought her in today that she came in with swelling of tongue and difficulty breathing and swallowing. And we have her history, including all of the medications and devices that she's taken. And it's a pretty comprehensive amount of information. We also have to help us figure out what could be wrong with her today. Information from the clinical trials of some of the drugs and devices that we've taken. And we could see that this document is in a semi-structured format with some tabular information. It also has a lot of information in both longer text as well as some shorter snippets of data points. Now let's head over to K-Extractor Studio, our developer UI and see what these documents look like once we've annotated them. Now, this is again, our developer UI. So we're not going to be expecting a healthcare professional to do this uh, in this environment. This is where we are going to be working through our lexicons, edit lexical rules and semantic rules, as well as the annotations. This is where we can tweak that NLP pipeline. And I'm not going to go into it in too much detail here, but this is exactly what we cover in the medical playbook if you want to try it out. So let me go back here to my documents. So here we have our annotated documents as they've gone through the NLP pipeline. And remember, we can keep editing until we're happy with the way these annotations reflect the entities and relations that are being extracted from the documents. So from the history of present illness, we see that Jane is a 77 year old woman and she's suffering from a number of pathological conditions, including coronary artery disease, type two diabetes and hypertension. And this information, I can link it back through the alias in the ontology. I can also see all of the different relationships we have here. We have a patient, the patient is experiencing these pathological states. The patient is then prescribed certain drugs for these states. And these drugs have certain characteristics like a dosage. She's also been taking this drug, Altus, for eight years. And we see that there's more and more relationships that we could be building throughout. From another document, we also know that she has a stent in place for her coronary artery disease. And we can see certain specifics like the delivery system of the drugs. So here we have one that is an IV or whether it is received through some sort of puff or pill. Now we wanna look at the clinical trial documents and see if we can find a link between the symptoms that she's having here and her prescriptions that she's been taking. So the first clinical trial that I have is for Ramapril, which we know is an alternate name for Altus. It is an alias. And one thing that we don't wanna take for granted here is that these are from not just different documents, but different sources of documents. And this is really where NLP and having that core ontology and pipeline helps to bring all of this data together because they're really coming from disparate originations. So a few things to point out over here. So not only is the clinical trial here involving Ramapril, uh, there's another drug as well. And we wanna make sure that we're focusing on the one that Jane is taking and not the other drugs that were involved in the study. We also can see that we have certain relationships between these drugs and the dosages. And specifically in this study, we have Ramapril being given at 10 milligrams once a day. So this is the study that we found that has the right dosage of the right drug that Jane has been taking. 
And there's some things that we see in the study that are interesting. We have relationship types that we would expect between these drugs and these dosages. We also have placebo studies. We have information about the demographics of the subjects or the arm group, the subgroup, and we have their gender and age and so on. Now, at the bottom, we have the information we really want to focus on, which is the serious adverse events. This is the symptom that we want to pull back to what Jane has been admitted to the ER for today and see if we can find any sort of connections between the trials here and what she's experiencing. So in this case, we have the adverse event, like a pulmonary embolism. And again, we see that this is broken out by the relationships between these different concepts. So my pulmonary embolism event has the relationship of event reported on a certain drug. There was a number of subjects affected in that group. The number of subjects in the arm group is important to distinguish between which drug it was about. So it's not enough to just find the number of subjects in the group. So for example, for Ramapril, we had one subject in this arm group E2 that was affected with the serious adverse event pulmonary embolism. I wanna jump over now to another document for the other clinical trial and show you how even another clinical trial can look very different even when it's about drugs. So in this one, I have a clinical trial that is also involving Ramapril. However, the key distinction here is that there was a dosage change. So we see that the drug increased over time and we have people going from negative five milligram tablets to 10 milligrams. We also have people changing other dosages throughout. And what's important here is that we can't just search the document and see whether there is a MG label. We have to see whether there is a specific increase. And this has another relationship. This has a dosage change, which happened between these two pieces. Now, if we don't like the way that the rule looks, this is where we have a clue as to where we could go back in studio and make changes to those rules. And again, if we find that there aren't enough relationships between the concepts we want, we go back and we annotate until we feel that this is reflecting how we want this to be ultimately in the graph. Lastly, I do want to point out the other clinical trial, which is about a stent. And you'll see that this one is a little bit different as well. So we've seen two trials so far that are quite different, even when they are about drugs. And now we have the stent. And we see here that we have a medical device. So this is for a prokinetic energy stent. But what allows us to compare these more like apples to apples rather than uh, apples to oranges is that we've used the same relations that we did for the medications in here as we do for the stent. So we can also see the serious adverse event and how this um, medical device affected the different subjects. So in this case, we have our, some serious adverse events. We have the number of subjects in the group that were affected a little bit higher here, event reported arm, or event reported on the arm group and so on. So again, that's how we're able to use NLP to kind of normalize our data, even though they're coming from not just different sources, but also have some fundamentally different characteristics. Another thing that's important to mention here is that we're talking about serious adverse events. 
Now we do have some instances in here of cough as a symptom or maybe just an adverse event, but the ones that are really driving us today are the ones that are these serious adverse events. And again, the level of severity is subjective and it could be something um, different that depending on the ultimate use case, you might wanna tag differently and process it differently in the pipeline. So that's what I wanted to show you today. And of course, it's a snapshot from an immense amount of documents. Jane is 77 years old. She's been alive for a long time. She has a lot of conditions, medications, devices, and those all interact with one another. The data on how these treatments affected other people can be buried through different documents and stored disparately, which makes it quite complicated. But by using NLP with your graph, and letting the pipeline do a lot of that work for you, you can hopefully make it less complicated and get more out of your data. Thanks for watching from Limba. Please reach out to us with any questions or for help on your next project. To receive a free consultation, email us at infolimba.com, where we can customize a demo to suit your needs about your specific situation.